day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Nikola Tesla Ancient pyramids, the marveled wonders of the world, have mystified and enchanted people of the modern era since their discovery on almost every continent on Earth. The mystery of the pyramids is one that transcends time, civilization, and culture. Thanks to satellite imagery, pyramidal structures continue to be found all over the world, in jungles, under ice, and even under oceans. Although we're most familiar with the pyramids in Egypt, specifically the Great Pyramid in Giza, it's not the only one. A surprisingly global phenomenon, we can find several ancient pyramids around the world. Almost every ancient culture and civilization has left a legacy of towering ancient pyramids. These majestic structures are truly masterpieces of engineering, but what was actually their purpose? What secrets do these ancient structures hide? Even with our current understanding of human history, the creation and purpose of many ancient pyramids is as elusive as it is mind-boggling. The Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the most recognized pyramids in the world, compromised of 2.3 million individual stone blocks amounting to 6 million tons, and it was perfectly engineered. We've been told by mainstream historians that it took 20 years to complete the Great Pyramid, yet to achieve this timeline, one block would have had to have been placed every two and a half minutes. On top of this monumental achievement in construction, the form and position of the pyramid structure is also an intriguing marvel of the ancient world. It is well known that the Great Pyramid is located at the maximum geographical center of Earth or close to it. No proposed hypothesis tends to explain why. Most tend to ignore this fact or downplay it. If the pyramid is indeed built as a tomb, as mainstream scholars told us, how did Khufu end up picking the location for the tomb to be at, or close to, the geographical center of the Earth? With the pyramid construction estimated at 20 years, is mapping and charting the planet factored into the pyramid construction time? That hypothesis lacks an explanation for this important aspect and beyond any doubt it is critical in understanding the function of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Many people don't know this, but contrary to popular belief, the Great Pyramid is not simply a four-sided structure. It has a slight concavity on each side, making it an eight-sided pyramid. Can this unique shape provide some clues as to the true power and relationship to Earth's motion? Some theories suggest that the pyramids were originally intended to be giant machines capable of producing and transmitting electromagnetic frequencies. The internal construction of the Great Pyramid resembles a power plant and no mummy has ever been found inside it. Is this merely a coincidence or is it possible that the pyramids weren't burial chambers, but rather energy transmitters? Another mystery is surrounding the pyramids. Where are the capstones? Even the $1 bill displays the missing gold-crusted point of the pyramid. When you look up at the Great Pyramid, its pyramidion, or capstone, is missing. It is flat-topped and not pointed like a pyramid should be. It was considered the most important part of the pyramid and was made of special stone or even gold. Many people who made the arduous climb to the top of the Great Pyramid witnessed minuscule yet noticeable shifts in energy, prickling sensations in body extremities and even cases of electric shock. Climbing to the top of the Great Pyramid is now illegal, but in the late 1800s, a British inventor named Sir William Siemens made it to the flat, settled atop the Great Pyramid of Giza. Upon reaching it, one of his guides remarked that when he raised his hand with his finger spread, 
his ears picked up a shrill, ringing noise. Siemens then raised a forefinger and felt a prickling sensation emanating from the tip and spreading through his hand. Not long after, the inventor went to quench his thirst with a celebratory sip of wine and received an electric shock from his lips touching the bottle. Siemens thought that these curious occurrences were more than just coincidence, so he moistened a piece of newspaper to wrap around his bottle of wine to create a makeshift laden jar. When he held this primitive capacitor over his head, sparks of electricity crackled and flew through the air. One of the guides became unnerved and attempted to seize the bottle. Siemens, either to avoid his experiment being interrupted or in an attempt to self-defense, pointed the bottle at the agitated man who was thrown backwards onto the ground and knocked unconscious from ensuing current. But how was that possible? Many studies have shown that even the natural structure of the pyramids lends itself well to theories of energetic transmission. Based on a 1 in 14,400 ratio, the foundational dimensions of a pyramid appear to be harmonically integrated with the earth which means that around the time of the pyramid's construction, humans had a pretty good idea of Earth's size. In 1905, a Serbian engineer, physicist and inventor, Niko Tesla, submitted his patent 787,412, which was titled, The Art of Transmitting Electrical Energy Through the Natural Medium. It included designs for a series of worldwide generators. Tesla believed the pyramids served a higher purpose and was investigating them throughout his life. What did he find so alluring about the pyramids? He realized the ionosphere was sparkling with electrical energy which could easily be tapped. According to Tesla, planet Earth was a gigantic electrical generator spinning around two magnetic poles from which limitless energy can be harnessed using the right medium or shape. Tesla was certain that he could recreate this process and capture energy he believed to be lodged deep in the earth and transmitted all over the globe. He was fairly certain that the earth itself was a large capacitor, holding endless volts of electricity that he believed he could provide to anyone in the world for an endless amount of time. His device was later referred to as Tesla's electromagnetic pyramid based on his design looking like a triangle shape. In 1900, famed financier J.P. Morgan learned of Tesla's convictions after reading an article in Century magazine, wherein the scientist described a global network of high voltage towers which could one day control the weather, relay text and images wirelessly and provide ubiquitous electricity via the atmosphere. Morgan, hoping to capitalize on the future of wireless telegraphy, immediately invested 150000 to relocate Tesla's lab to Long Island to construct a pilot plant for this world wireless system. In 1905, a team of construction workers in the small village of Shoreham, New York, labored to erect a truly extraordinary structure. Over a period of several years, the men had managed to assemble the framework and wiring for the 187-foot-tall Wardenclyffe Tower. According to Tesla, it wasn't just the shape of the Egyptian pyramids, but their location that created their power. He built a tower facility known as the Tesla Experimental Station in Colorado Springs and Wardenclyffe Tower, or Tesla Tower, on the East Coast that sought to take advantage of the Earth's energy field. The locations were chosen according to the laws of where the pyramids of Giza were built, related to the relationship between the elliptical orbit of the planet and the equator. The design was intended for wireless transmission of energy. The first prototype he built, the Wardenclyffe Tower, was basically a large octagonically shaped capacitor with a gold domed capstone that discharged any buildup or excess energy. Its iron foundation reached 300 feet into the ground. Because of the high magnetic density of the area, 
Tesla selected to research, the electric field's voltage increased by 100 volts per meter and he wanted his tower as high as possible to achieve maximum voltage. This massive structure was intended to fling raw energy skyward that would then be captured by homes around the globe, simply outfitted with a buried ground connection and a small antenna affixed to their roofs. Ships at sea could also theoretically tap into this widespread energy source with similar antennas, and in addition to electricity, there was the possibility the energy could also carry and transmit radio frequency information, much like high-speed internet today. Though it was far from completion, it was rumored to have been tested on several occasions with spectacular, crowd-pleasing results. The ultimate purpose of this unique structure was to change the world forever. To finish that project, Tesla needed more funds and he referred to JP Morgan to invest more in the project. When Tesla explained to him that his wireless transmitter receiver would produce free electricity for the whole planet and JP Morgan realized it would not bring any profits for him, he withdrew his support. This way, he, along with others like him, denied humanity free energy. Free energy would have bankrupted their utility industries, including the oil industry. If Tesla's plans had come to completion, the pilot plant would have been merely the first of many. Such magnifying transmitter towers would have been built all around the globe, saturating the planet with free electricity and wireless communication as early as the 1920s. Instead, the futuristic facility's potential went untapped for over a decade until the tower was finally demolished for salvage in 1917. Tesla's discovery and device disappeared after his death in 1943, but what he was trying to tap into might have just scratched the surface of understanding the power of something much more ancient. Another aspect of Tesla's thinking reportedly related to numerology. Tesla was, by many accounts, an unusual individual with obsessive qualities. Tesla became so obsessed with the numbers 3, 6, and 9, which he believed were the keys to the universe. He would drive around buildings three times before going in or stay in hotels with numbers divisible by three. He made calculations about things in their immediate environment just to make sure the result was conceivable by three. And he'd base his choices on the results. He did everything in sets of three. What was Tesla trying to make us understand? Some believe Tesla's obsession with these numbers connected to his preference for pyramidal shapes and the belief that there was some fundamental mathematical law and ratios that are part of a universal math language. We must understand that we did not create mathematics, we just discovered them. It is the universal language and law as no matter where in the universe you are, one plus two will always equal three. Tesla wanted the world to know the significance of the numbers three, six, and nine he claimed these were extremely important numbers, but the question is why? And what is the connection between the Great Pyramid and Tesla's obsession with those numbers? First, as mentioned earlier, the Great Pyramid is actually an eight-sided pyramid and that complicated the design tremendously, but at the same time produced a bizarre geometry in mathematics, forms that ancients emulated in construction. The same numbers Tesla was obsessed with, 3, 6, and 9, show up in the equations of the Great Pyramid. We'll come back to that later. The Great Pyramid of Giza is situated within a whisker of latitude 30 degrees north. They were on astronomical latitude 30, and that seems like a very deliberate choice because it is not random latitude. It's one-third of the way between the equator and the North Pole. The Great Pyramid faces true north with a mere 3 60th of a degree of error. This is almost eerie precision 
because the scale of the monument is so huge. It is assumed that when it was initially raised, it was precisely aligned with the North Pole, the position of which has shifted slightly over time. The Great Pyramid stands at the center of the Earth's landmass. The lines of latitude and longitude on which it lies pass through more land and less water than any others. If we measure its base perimeter and its height, what we find is that it represents the Earth's northern hemisphere on a scale of 1 in 43,200. In other words, if we measure the base perimeter of the Great Pyramid and multiply it by 43,200, we'll get the equatorial circumference of the Earth. And if we measure the height of the Great Pyramid and multiply it by 43,200, we'll get the polar radius of the Earth. It is only since the carrying out of satellite surveys from space in the 1970s that scientists have obtained measurements of the Earth as accurate as those contained in the Great Pyramid. Mainstream historians are aware of this scale, but they suggest that it's just a coincidence. The reason they're not right is that the scale is not random as it's defined by a key motion of the Earth itself. As Earth rotates, it wobbles slightly upon its axis like a slightly off-center spinning top. This wobble is due to tidal forces caused by the gravitational influences of the Sun and Moon and cause Earth to bulge at the equator, affecting its rotation. The trend in the direction of this wobble relative to the fixed positions of stars is known as axial precession. The cycle of axial precession is 25,920 years. The North Pole of the Earth today in our time is pointing at the star we call Polaris. But a couple thousand years ago, they were Kochab and Pinkrad. And it won't always point at Polaris in the future. Sometimes it'll point at empty space and sometimes at other stars. Ancient cultures had a great interest in particular moments of the year, particularly the equinoxes, when night and day are of equal length. It was an obsession of ancient cultures. Today we live in the age of Pisces, near the end of it as a matter of fact. The sign of Pisces, the fish, is often associated with Christianity because Christianity began at very near the beginning of the age of Pisces and the early Christians used the fish as their symbol. There are various methods of calculating the boundaries of an astrological age because the earth slows by one degree every 72 years over a period of 2160 years it moves backward by 30 degrees and therefore the sun begins to rise in a different constellation on the morning of the equinox and solstice. This is known as the precision of the equinoxes. Multiply 72 by 30, the result is 2160. That's a zodiacal age. Each 30 degree section is one zodiac sign for a total of 12. These 12 zodiac signs are not star constellations. Zodiac signs are 30 degree sections of space that were mathematically calculated in the way that was and still is intimately connected to our yearly seasons. Because of the precession of the equinoxes, the constellation that houses the sun on the equinox is shifting out of Pisces and into Aquarius. We've been in the transition from the Piscean age to the Aquarian age for the last 50 years. The age of Aquarius begins at the point when the Sun is no longer in front of the constellation Pisces at the time of the March equinox. Some researchers like Graham Hancock claim that the Great Pyramid's proportions contain hidden codes and those codes demonstrate proof the ancient builders were aware of Earth's precession and circumference and capable of calculating both to a degree of accuracy inconsistent with ancient knowledge and technology. The number 43,200 is derived from a key motion of the Earth, which is called the precession of the Earth's axis. Let's play the numbers now. 
latitude of the pyramid, 30 and three plus zero equals three. Cycle of axial precession, 25,920 and two plus five plus nine plus two plus zero equals 18 and one plus eight equals nine. Zodiacal age, 2160 and two plus one plus six plus zero equals nine. Earth moves one degree every 72 years, seven plus two equals nine. Base perimeter scale, 43,200 and four plus three plus two plus zero plus zero equals nine. The Earth wobbles on its axis very slowly at the rate of one degree every 72 years and 43,200 is 600 times 72 and six plus zero plus zero equals six. All of those numbers equals three, six, or nine. If you only knew the magnificence of the three, the six and the nine, then you would have a key to the universe, Nikola Tesla. Interesting enough, the numbers Tesla was obsessed with show up in the equations of the Great Pyramid. Could it be possible that ancient humans created monuments like the Great Pyramid to withstand all catastrophes so humanity could always have the codes to the universe? Is it possible this is what Nikola Tesla tapped into trying to find a code or a key to the universe? The way we read the universe is through mathematics and through its geometry. The Great Pyramid is speaking that language. It's transmitting that language. It's a silent language that needs to be read. We don't need Egyptologists. We don't need experts in hieroglyphics. It doesn't have hieroglyphics. What we need is mathematicians to read it. In order to continue where Tesla stopped, we need to start thinking differently and maybe then we'll be able to finish what Nikola Tesla started. Thank you for watching and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. We really hope you subscribe and if you'd like to be notified of future releases, just hit the bell button. Leave a comment. Let us know what your thoughts are on all of this and what topics you'd like to explore in our future videos.